All right, welcome tonight to a very special self-care awakening show. We're just going to be having a discussion about what is self-care and bottled water. My name is Heather Abbott. I'm a graphic designer. I work in Dave Johnson's office. I'm also a self-care advocate. I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Gary Lindner. He is a uh, physiologist, has a PhD in physiology, and he is the self-care ambassador. <laughs> Dr. Gary, in your noisy house, how are you doing? <laughs> I, I'm doing fine. Is the house still noisy? I apologize for that. It, it's empty other than for me and Sandy, the uh, Italian greyhound dog, but everyone else has left, and uh, I'm not her favorite person. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so, anyways... Um, well, thank you, Heather, and thank you for hosting this evening. Uh, I was pretty much driving most of the day and thinking about what we could talk about, and you and I had a little conversation earlier and said, let's talk a little bit about bottled water. But, but before we do that, let's talk just a little bit about self-care and why self-care is important and why people should pay attention to it. And, you know, our, our motto or our tagline is be healthy by choice, not by chance. And when I'm engaging in conversation with people and I say that, they really want to kind of know what I mean. Uh, you know, why do you say that? And I said, well, because if we leave our health to chance, chances are we aren't going to be very healthy. And if, I mean, and, and many of us, you know, on tonight probably realize that. But I would pretty much say the general public doesn't. You know, some of the things that we talk about in this advocacy, if you will, or this uh, topic of conversation is our facts and figures are just, you know, things that, that are going on that most people aren't aware of. Most people aren't aware that according to the Centers for Disease Control, that one out of two Americans have at least one chronic disease. That's, you know, 50 percent of us that uh, one out of four have two or more that by the time we're 65. 80% of us have one, if not multiple, chronic diseases, and it becomes our major cause of death, our major cause of poor quality of life, our major cause of expenditure, and treating and managing things that, for the most part, could probably be prevented with just a little bit of uh, awareness and some different choices. There's a, you know, there's a perception in this country that being healthy is a difficult thing to do. And I think that stems from the fact that we're taught from the time that we are very young that uh, we're taught about two modalities to be healthy. We're taught about diet and exercise, and those both involve lifestyle changes and sometimes major lifestyle changes, and people are resistant to change. But what we talk about through the Self-Care Awakening series are pretty simple, easy choices, like, Water, how much should we drink? What type of water should we drink? I mean, you know, sleep, we talk about air quality, we talk about nutrition, uh, we talk about, uh, uh, what else do we talk about? A number of other things, but, but you know, the series was, was created really so people could make some easy choices, first become aware, and then make some easy, easy choices for a healthier life. Um, the, I was just down at uh, corporate headquarters last week and, and had a, oh, about an hour, hour and a half conversation with Nikan's uh, uh, CEO, Kurt Foley, uh, Mr. Foley. And really, we, we talked about self-care. We talked about that as a concept. We talked about Nikan's term active wellness or leading an active wellness lifestyle, leading a life in balance. And if we don't pay attention to our health uh, or the quality of our health, really, what kind of balanced life can we lead? Not, not very much. I mean, so that's the thing that I think that's the one aspect that I like to talk to people about first is about being healthy. And, you know, the, uh, as I was doing that, or actually thinking about that, and when we talked earlier today, and I said, let's, let's talk a little bit about bottled water. The impetus for that was a business lunch, and I attended, oh, probably about, well, it'll be two weeks ago tomorrow. And at that luncheon, we're maybe 10, 12 people. And it's a, it's a small business group, a networking group. We kind of uh, help each other in our businesses, um, not just by referrals, but with uh, more concepts. Uh, you know, what do you do with an employee that's giving you troubles, things like that. So we kind of act as a board of directors. It's called the CEO Roundtable. It's a group we started in Lodi about seven years ago. 
And everybody was sitting around, and out of those 10, 12 people there, uh, just about everybody but myself was drinking water. Of course, I was using my Nikon sports bottle, and guess what everybody else was drinking? Bottled water. And, and I asked them, I, I said, as a group, I mean, the topic of conversation kind of came around, and I said, well, here we are, and there's about 12 of us here, and about 75% of you are drinking bottled water. Why? And their predominant answer was, they thought it was a healthier choice. And pretty much that's a result of marketing from that industry. It's not a result if they were to check some facts. <laughs> so, so, the, so again, I, it, 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 as if, if we take that representative of society, 75% of our society drink bottled water. You know, 20 to 25% of them drink only bottled water. And out of those people drinking the bottled water, only one said, I'm drinking it because it's more convenient. I can pick it up in a, you know, when I'm at the gas station or in a store or out of a vending machine. And it's convenient for me to do so. And, and so, you know, my question to him was, is convenience more important than your health? Because <laughs> so, you know, <coughs> that would be a valid question. Now, if we look at that choice, and let's just talk about water for a second. And, and if you've got something you want to chime in and ask me, yeah, by all means, go ahead and do so. You're shaking your head, you do. So interrupt me when you would like to and ask your questions. But let's just talk about water itself and its importance to our body. It's basically involved in every physiological process that we have. And as a physiologist, I appreciate that. Um, Water is not just a beverage choice, and we talk about that in the presentation, Water Matters. It is an essential nutrient, and when we think of it that way, our perception of water will change. In other words, we know we need to drink half our body weight in ounces per day, but 75 to 80% of us don't do that, and we walk around chronically dehydrated, which can lead to many different types of chronic uh, problems. So, and, and cheers, I see you're taking a little drink right now, so <laughs> that's uh, of water and that's good. And that brings the point too, a lot of times people haven't created a habit to drink water. And I, I can see just from, you know, today on the, tonight's show, that you're sipping on water. And I do that throughout the day. I mean, through waking hours throughout the day, I always have water available. I always have it with me. And I sip on it. I don't even consciously have to think about drinking half my body weight in ounces. It just happens. When my body needs water, I will automatically, just from a standpoint of habit, pick up the glass and take a drink. People that are trying to force themselves to drink that much water, gulp it down. It feels uncomfortable. It, they, they, they feel it's a cumbersome thing to do. Just train your body. I mean, when we feel thirsty, it's too late. We're already dehydrated. So, either fire away. You got a couple things you want to ask about bottled water? Have at it. Well, um, you've already covered the fact that it's not a healthier choice. One question I had was, um, what about like the Gatorades or the bottled waters now that have extra electrolytes added to them? Is that well, a choice? It's not. And again, that's from a marketing standpoint. So vitamin water. I mean, you have uh, glacier water, you have <laughs> smarter water, you have, I mean, you know, it's, and again, I, I would invite anybody uh, listening to this to do a little research there. Uh, the Environmental Working Group has a great site where they've rated different waters. They tested 38 different bottled waters. They found everything from arsenic to industrial pollutants in them. And we're not even talking about some of the, the toxins that are leached from the very, uh, 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 from the plastic bottles over a period of time into that water. Um, th that much of that's marketing. And, and it's, uh, again, that kind of, uh, it's probably the biggest, let's put it this way. This year is the first year where bottled water sales will be greater than soda sales. I believe they already are. It's soft drink sales, all right? And that was predicted, and I think you're right. I think they've already exceeded that. 
So what that tells me is that people are looking for something healthier. They're choosing bottled water as opposed to a soft drink. But then the marketing from the soft drink companies that own most of the bottled water labels have led them to that belief that they're choosing something healthier. Uh, and they're paying 2,000 times more for it than they would for tap water. Now, the Environmental Working Group also advises uh, tap water and use a water filtration system if you that is rated or third-party rated to remove harmful things uh, as the best way to provide yourself with good water. And, of course, we the, who advocate for, for Nikan and its product uh, and product technologies, the waterfall is an excellent, cost-effective, simple choice. Uh, and the sport bottle with it as well. So, so, you know, if we look at bottled water, it's really poorly, if at all, regulated. Nobody's monitoring. And and you can go and, and Google a number or just research a number of different sites talking about all the things that are harmful that they find in there. They usually find when they test it and taste test, it loses to tap water. People like and prefer tap water, but then... If they see it in a bottle, they're, they're thinking it's going, again, from marketing, that's going to taste better, but it doesn't necessarily do in a blind taste test. And many times, uh, bottled waters aren't, uh, they aren't regulated to municipal standards for safe drinking water. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I think, what was it? It was a figure of, uh, I think, 40, maybe 45% of them tested in the state of California failed safe drinking uh, water conditions that the state puts out, uh, which, which of course, for municipal uh, standards, you need to do. Um, so that I'm getting a healthier choice is really not substantiated. So. Well, healthier than sodas, but still not your best beverage choice. Well, it's the other thing, too, that I advocate for is watch your sugar content. So... Also, if you're drinking a soda, what are you drinking? You're basically drinking water with phosphoric acid added to it, which is extremely acidic. Over a period of time, it will melt a nail if you put it in a soda or, or a carbonated beverage, per se. Uh, very caustic, very caustic to your stomach, your intestinal lining, everything else, and, and really uh, throwing off your, uh, your uh, homeostasis as far as acid-base balance as well. Great. So you've already mentioned Nikon. So I will go ahead and say that uh, this is an independent Nikon consultant presentation. Um, however, I am not an independent Nikon consultant. And the one thing that I did notice when I did start working for one was the taste of the pie water. It just tasted better. Um, but can you tell me a little bit why the pie water is a healthier choice than a bottled water? Sure. It's, it's from the design of the waterfall. What it does, and I'm going to do this in really simplistic terms, Heather, is it takes the things that are harmful in municipally treated water from chlorination and other things and the way they, they prepare it to be safe for drinking. Um, and chlorination is probably a great thing. It saved, you know, I don't know how many millions and millions of lives from uh, different bacterial viruses, you know, communicable diseases. But when we add uh, halides or something like chlorine to, to water, what it does, it reacts with organic material and then produces a number of volatile organic compounds that can be carcinogenic or very harmful over a long period of time, uh, whether you're bathing in it or drinking it. The, the, uh, so basically, we want to take those harmful things out. And as we take those harmful things out through different stages of filtration, what we're looking for in a healthier water, a healthy water is adding back into that water things that our body needs or, or that nature intended to be there. Primarily, we're talking about minerals. So a distilled water, a water run through reverse osmosis basically strips everything out of that water. And when we consume it, then our body really needs to kind of put minerals back into it so we can actually use it. So we're... we're you know, basically in a natural sense, we want to consume water with minerals in it to begin with. We also want a water that has a structure that makes it very absorbable. And we do that with that system as well. 
And, and the third thing is we want to alter the acid-base balance of it to a slightly alkaline level and, and, and a, a pH about 8, 8.5, and that's sevens neutral. So it's not a high alkalinity, but it's a slightly alkaline water, and our body does better with it as well because that helps us regulate our, our natural acid-base balance in our body because virtually everything we do produces acid. <laughs> we want to counteract that with a little slightly alkaline water. And, and the waterfall is an excellent choice. I highly advocate for it. It is simple to use. It's cost-effective. Uh, one of the important uh, factors in it is that it is third-party validated by uh, standard foundations, water quality associations, national standard foundation, NSF, ANSI, uh, to where we can actually show people, yes, this is what is removed. And here, here it is uh, stated in this document or in this testing that we're removing 99.9% .9 of whatever that compound is. And I think that's very important. Uh, when people are looking at a healthier type of water or using some type of filtration, that it does those things. It makes it the way nature intended water to be, and then also it's verified. You can verify it actually does it. There's a lot of them. You know, I get this question a lot of times that people say, well, gosh, I invested $3,000 in this system. And I say, well, Brad, you know, you'd think that'd be a great system. So can you tell me really, you know, what does it remove as far as volatile organic compounds, trichloroethylenes, trichalomethanes, and they can't do it because it's never been tested. So, um, and, and basically they thought they were making a healthy choice because it's more expensive. And a lot of times people think that way about bottled water too, because it is expensive basically for something that's literally for free out of the tap, but then people pay 2,000 times more for it. And their assumption is they are because it's healthier. Okay, um, and you you mentioned the sports bottle, and for anybody that doesn't know what the sports bottle is, if you go on the self care Facebook page, you'll see um, some. I was just recently in California and Disneyland celebrating my daughter's birthday, and I was taking pictures with. We both had our little naked sports bottles. I was taking pictures in different locations with that, telling everybody to stay quenched, you know, stay hydrated, especially when you're traveling. Does the sports bottle work pretty much the same way as the waterfall system? It does. Very similar. We have uh, removal of harmful things. We put minerals back in and we produce an alkaline water. And we produce a structured water that's more absorbable. So it's uh, very healthy water on the go. And you can uh, fill it up from a drinking fountain, which I'm sure you guys probably did in Disneyland, because uh, it didn't cost you five dollars a bottle for bottled water, and uh, it would have given you more, more, uh, more money for uh, little tchotchkes or things you buy in the gift stores or in the Emporium that way. So, yeah. Yes, that was a much cheaper alternative. You know, when I was was in the Mid East and uh, just recently, I mean, I went everywhere with it and and did the same thing. And we posted pictures on the self care page with that as well. So, um, stay hydrated. I mean, really, and it's just and that's another great way to just sip that water all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, have that with you, whether you work or if you're in your vehicle or walking around. So, I mean, I have a lanyard on mine, and I just walk around with it with a lanyard. I'm thirsty, I'm taking a couple of zips. Yeah, I mean, it was great for us, especially because you don't have to worry about your water that you're drinking. We um, normally go to Walt Disney World, and everybody knows that the water in Florida is absolutely horrible. It's some, it's some of the worst water on the planet. So this then, is then half, the, half the state's underwater. So. <laughs> They're sinking, they're sinkholes, but that's, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, it, it was nice. We didn't have to worry about the quality of the water we were drinking. And seriously, yeah, water, $5 a bottle. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, and that's a very, that's a very inexpensive thing that you could start off with. As opposed to sure. $49 investment, yeah. 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 Great way to stay hydrated. Yeah. So, um, and my last question for you tonight is, um, and I mean this with all compliments, you're a very handsome man, but when I um, met you back in January, you were a little bit heavier, and then um, we did some stuff together at the Expo in Orlando, and at that time, um, do you mind telling us what you weighed? 
223 pounds. All right, well, since then, you have trimmed down quite a bit. What do you weigh now? 179. Okay, so my question is, obviously, you've been um, walking your talk. You've been practicing what you preach. How has this affected your daily routine and your schedule? Has it put a big dent in that? Uh, it, it's, I have more energy. I feel better. It's, and there's actually three things I did. And I've been involved with NECAN for be almost 19 years uh, in December. And uh, used their products. I've always considered myself very healthy. I have no chronic issues. I always have a lot of energy. I'm very active. Um, usually can. Uh, at least hold my own in any age group, regardless of the competition or the sport that we're participating in. But um, and I'm a little competitive that way too. But anyways, the uh, um, Barb Satterwhite, one of our our wonderful platinums, did a video, and she was asking me some self care questions, and then she sent me a link to it, and I was sitting very similar as I'm sitting now. Um, in a chair out by the pool area, uh, in a lounge chair, or a, you know, just a regular chair. And my stomach was huge. <laughs> it's the first thing I, lo I looked at this and went, oh my gosh, <laughs> what happened to me? <laughs> you know, whatever. But being, you know, I, I don't think you have to be vain to take a look at a, at a video like that, maybe a little bit, but go, wow, you know, I mean, I need to do something about that. So I did three things. I started to drink more water than half my body weight. It's pretty much all I drink during the day is water. I started to go to bed earlier at night because I used to be a night owl, and I'd get up fairly late in the morning. But I'm usually in bed by 11 and up by 7. What that does is helps my metabolism. It helps me burn more calories during the day. And I also I use another one of our products. and the Ken's and Vital Balance to help curb any carbohydrate or sugar cravings. And I try to limit my sugar consumption. So the only lifestyle big change I made was really kind of looking at labels and seeing how much sugar is in a serving of, of the type of food that I may eat. Um, and I think that will be quite enlightening to anybody that does that. So I was just visiting with my sister the week before when I was down in Irvine. Um, you know, I'm from that area and she still lives there and and so I was staying with her and uh, since she listened to uh, I think that was self-care solutions is that the one that we, we did that story on I believe um, she's and it's been fairly recent since we recorded that one Heather she's uh, uh, what she tell me lost 14 pounds just by pretty much doing and she didn't have to change time she went to bed. She goes, she teaches kindergarten, so she goes to bed pretty early, ends up pretty early anyway. But monitoring sugar. And it, she's uh, four years older than I am, and a lot of times when we get to, uh, to our ages, they tell you, you know, your metabolism slows down and losing weight is a very difficult thing to do. But just with those little three things and her watching more sugar, uh, you know, She's lost 12 pounds in a relatively short period of time and in a healthy way. I didn't give up anything per se. I didn't make huge lifestyle changes. I just made a conscious effort to kind of watch sugar consumption, drink more water, drink less of teas and other type things, and uh, go to bed a little bit earlier. And it just kind of naturally happened uh, that, that I'd lose eight pounds, seven, eight pounds a month. And start to have more energy and feel better. And so recently I've just started a, a, a exercise program to uh, maybe gain a little more weight, but redistribute it more as lean muscle as opposed to the type of weight I was gaining. I was carrying, uh, as you so observantly pointed out in April. So. <laughs> I meant the best compliments. I really do. I know you did. I, I don't take offense to that at all. I just did a little thing, just a smidge. But so this has not really impacted your daily routine. Oh, not at all. In fact, it's enhanced many of the things that I do daily. So. And so, don't you think that that would make this easy to adopt and maintain? Absolutely. And also, from that standpoint, is you know what what I don't know there is what the difference would be if I didn't invest in the best sleep system in the world, and you can nature West sleep system. 
and slept on a regular conventional mattress. I don't know what the difference would be if uh, I drank other types of water other than Nikon's Climag water. Um, I know there'd probably be a difference just in the change in diet from monitoring sugar, but how much effective, more effective is it when I start every day with a uh, Ken's and Vital Balance Shake and help you know curb that? I mean, the best way to break a sugar addiction and it's very addictive is with protein. And this is probably the healthiest protein that I've ever seen. I've shown the formulation of our Ken's and Vital Balance to many people with advanced degrees in nutrition. And their universal response is, whoever put this formulation together did their homework. I couldn't improve on it. It's excellent. And, and it really is. So, But that's the unknown factor because I don't have a control. <laughs> I don't have, I haven't cloned myself with another Gary that weighed 223 pounds and said, you just drink other water and all this and see what the difference is. But I'm sure it was very helpful because I'm not – uh, when I'm drinking water, I'm not taking in environmental toxins. Uh, you know, when I'm sleeping at night, I'm getting deeper sleep. I'm uh, helping my metabolism that way. I'm recharging so that I have more energy during the day than I would if I slept on a conventional mattress. So through self-care and through self-care advocacy, we teach these principles of being healthy by choice, not by chance. And then the product or technology is a choice for that person to say, well, what kind of water do you drink? Well, I drink the best water on the planet. Let me show you what it's like. Right, let me show, tell you about it. Uh, I get great sleep because I have this sleep system that supports the physiology of sleep. Um, you know, I have energy during the day. I don't need to nap in the afternoon. I don't run out of energy during the day. Um, and if that's the case, then I'm obviously burning more calories. So, so that's the really cool thing. That's the little unknown factor. But I will state and I'll state it from a standpoint as a physiologist, and Sandy's whining back there. I don't know if you can hear it, but, but uh, I'm sure it adds a lot. It's probably an exponential factor as to improvement or not by using these, these products and technologies from Nikon that we advocate for as well. So, I mean, as, as a physiologist, you could say no matter what, better sleep, better water, or more water and less sugars. Yeah, I would say the three things that I think anybody, regardless of where they are in this panoramic of health, or this staircase of health, having some issues or they're very healthy, uh, will improve their health by watching the amount of sugar they, they take in every day. I mean, in the last 100 years, we've gone from 9 grams a day to 153 grams a day on an average for people in our society, in the U.S. And we aren't just seeing that here in this country. We're seeing the same type of chronic disease issues globally. Um, I mean, it's, and, and again, that's from, uh, there's, there's 600,000 food items in the U.S., 80% of them have added sugar. There's no reason for that. <laughs> there really isn't. I mean, there's more sugar in a serving, average serving of yogurt than there is in a Twinkie. And people, and people don't know. It. And they are unaware of a lot of these things. And that's really what I love and what I was talking with Mr. Floyd. Um, about last week is, you know, these these are things that people, everybody needs to know, not just people that are having a health issue or already have some type of chronic problem, uh, whether it's minor or whether it's major, everybody, and regardless of age, regardless of what, where they are in that staircase of health, uh, they're applicable uh, principles for everyone to be healthier by choice. Exactly. Well, we are out of time. This has actually been pretty fun. Um, I appreciate you uh, lending your vast knowledge. Okay. Not, not bad for calling you on the phone and say, hey, let's talk a little bit tonight. <laughs> Excellent job, Heather. Good questions, too. And All right. Well, um, I want to thank everybody for showing up. I want to remind you to be healthy by choice and not by chance. And we'll see you next Tuesday. With uh, we'll, we'll surprise you with the show, but we'll have something great. Just keep watching the uh, Facebook pages and you'll know what's going to come up. And, and, and for seeing everybody in San Antonio as well. Yeah, San Antonio, that's going to be great. You're a keynote speaker. I, I have 25 minutes. So, yeah, that's, you could say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say it, but you could say it. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. So. Yeah. All right. Well, good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.